honeymoon tomorrow, so <laughs> my wife isn't uh, so much a fan of history as I am, uh, so I'll try not to labour for too long. Um, so the three areas that I'm going to look at, um, I'm just going to try and connect uh, aspects of the Spanish Civil War with an Irish context. Um, and the first is really to just give you just a glance at some of the confidential diplomatic reports uh, from the Irish minister at the time, Leopold Kearney. Um, he had been in Spain since 1935, uh, but he, he had you know, extensive links to the country going back to the War of Independence, etc. And um, one of the things that I find fascinating is that all his reports um, were being sent directly to the Secretary of External Affairs, Joseph Walsh, who in turn was passing them on, we hope, to the Taoiseach, uh, Eamon de Valera, who was also Minister for uh, External Affairs at the time. So that was what we'd call today the line management. Um, one of the things I find fascinating about Kearney also is that his reports on the Civil War, and particularly the post-Civil War period, um, come from a man who himself uh, witnessed the Civil War. He was in the Irish Civil War and on the losing side. Um, so he might have felt um, a certain sympathy perhaps for the, for the Republic. Um, and he, when he returned to Spain in 1939, he would spend the next six years recording not how Franco was rebuilding the country and initiating uh, reconciliation, but rather uh, maintaining civil war uh, divisions. Um, so as you probably are well aware, uh, about half a million people died in the Spanish Civil War, hundreds of thousands more were imprisoned or in exile. And Kearney noticed that post um, the Spanish Civil War, when it was supposed to have ended, um, thousands more were still being arrested. In July 1939, a few months after the Spanish Civil War was officially ended, he recorded, quote, there are no signs of increased production. With hundreds of thousands killed, hundreds of thousands in exile, and hundreds of thousands in concentration camps, Spain is deprived of a very large proportion of skilled and unskilled workers. Um, one thing I'd like to just look at is how his reports focus uh, on the economy and particularly the post-Civil War uh, repression. So, partly in 1939, was, as a result of the war, Spain was probably the poorest country in Europe. You had, um, he was reporting cases of malnutrition, uh, infectious diseases like pellagra, etc. Um, there was, had been huge agricultural depletion. Uh, he noted, for example, that milk was rationed to, quote, half a pint per, per week. Dry, dried vegetables and rice were 120,000 tonnes uh, below normal production levels, and sugar was 180,000 tonnes uh, below the norm. He also, in July 1939, wrote his first report of what he called, quote, unofficial arrests in Madrid and of corpses being found in the vicinity of a Madrid cemetery. In October, he then recorded that 400 people, including priests, had been arrested for alleged separate activities. One reliable informant was a doctor who had to be on site during several executions. In one in Alcázar de San Juan, 50 prisoners were shot 10 at a time. And Kearney also commented, quote, I have often heard in the middle of the night, generally between 3 and 4 a.m., shots fired in the vicinity. Fast forward a year to March 1940, and Kearney writes, quote, I listened to almost continual shooting, which began not far from the legation, as more prisoners were shot and killed in local cemeteries. He also provided Dublin with photographic evidence of mass arrests of Basque priests. In one photo, 40 priests dressed in their cassocks stand in a prison yard. And I find myself asking, well, what would the Taoiseach and Joseph Walsh have made of this photographic evidence? What would Catholic Ireland have thought, after all, the church here have been such vociferous uh, supporters of the Franco side? And while all this repression was going on, the food situation in Spain was deteriorating. Even the papal nuncio acknowledged to Kearney that, quote, they are dying of hunger in Spain. In 1940, the country was 600,000 tonnes short of its normal wheat quota for domestic supply. He 
Yet during all this time, what Franco was doing was aligning his country more and more uh, with the Axis uh, powers. It kept going. 1941, Kearney records 898 people in a few weeks dying of typhoid, 471 chickenpox, 1,578 tuberculosis, over 8,000 from influenza. Doctor told them that, quote, the daily average at the moment is 50, end quote, of typhoid cases per day in Madrid. And also he learned that 46 people had died in the capital in one month from starvation, though doctors were ordered to falsify their death certificates as a vitaminosis, to give the impression that the people had other underlying illnesses that caused their deaths. 1942, Kearney informs Dublin that, quote, the country had no wheat reserved and has begun to use the 1942-43 crop. Then, 23rd of September 1943, he writes another report. This is four years after the Civil War is supposed to have ended. He says, quote, From an officer 28 years of age, who is a Capitan Jurídico, member of a military court in Madrid, I learned that whenever the court passes a death sentence, he has to sign it and to be present at the execution. I understand that it is the officer in charge of the firing squad who fixes the date of execution and that he prefers to deal with a certain number at a time. This number is usually about 40. The condemned are roped together wrist to wrist. The squad consists of 10 or 12 soldiers. Consequently, a man awaiting his turn to be shot often has a dead or dying neighbour pulling him down on one side. It is just four and a half years since the Civil War ended." End quote. And of course, all these confidential reports you know, were kept very much uh, in-house. Um, but the crimes didn't stop there. On the 13th of June 1945, this is after the war in Europe has ended, uh, Kearney records, quote, as I lay awake in the early hours of Tuesday the 12th of June, I heard a volley of shots in the vicinity, followed by several coups de grace, and I presume that a batch of condemned prisoners was disposed of on that occasion, end quote. At no stage during these years, six years after the Spanish Civil War was supposed to have ended, did the Irish government consult their legal advisor, Dr. Michael Wren, to discuss these crimes? Nor did they ever call in the Spanish diplomatic representative in Dublin, Juan Garcia Antiveros, to verify, dispute or account for these mass executions. No note of protest was ever lodged. No communication was ever made between the Irish government and the Irish church for joint action or statement to be released. Instead, the Irish state turned a blind eye to Franco's post-war killings of thousands of innocent people years after the conflict ended. Pragmatism rather than principled Catholic morality drove Irish foreign policy. Another area I'd just like to uh, briefly look at is how the war impacted on refugees and how this would have a link to Ireland as well. The long-term consequences of the Spanish Civil War was the exile of hundreds of thousands of Spaniards abroad. Ireland had been, as I said earlier, one of the most staunch supporters of Franco for political, religious and conservative reasons. Yet ironically, it also became a sanctuary for Republican exiles, particularly Bass, who admired de Valera's nationalist policies, his prioritisation of an ancient Gaelic culture and language, much like their own, and the wrestling of independence from Britain. As a result of retrospective legislation by the Franco state, anyone including exiles who had supported the Spanish Republic was liable to arrest, imprisonment or death. Many Basques had lived at the time in southern France, but when the Germans came in, the Gestapo and SD, that's uh, uh, Himmler's, uh, the SS's secret service, um, began hunting through the countryside for these people and handing them back to Franco as part of a agreement he had signed during the Civil War with them. Uh, one group of about a dozen baths left Saint-Jean-de-Luz in a fishing boat just as the Gestapo stormed the town and they began a 687 mile hazardous voyage in rough weather uh, where they eventually arrived in, Cor in Cove Harbour uh, on the 3rd of July 1940. But the other fascinating thing about these baths is that they weren't just ordinary people they were quite prominent individuals during the Spanish Civil War. 
um, and most of them <coughs> used Ireland not only for sanctuary but also to continue a resistance movement um, against uh, Franco. And the Irish people were quite sensitive to the Basques uh, because of their customs and sympathised with their struggle to promote a unique cultural identity because it resonated, of course, with their own struggle against Britain. Uh, more importantly, perhaps the Basques were admired by the Catholic hierarchy in Ireland for their strong religious devotion. Uh, Spanish orders of Basque origin, like the Jesuits, uh, had a strong presence in the Irish educational system and they lent their support to these exiles. So as a result of this, the Irish state actually adopted a compassionate um, attitude to the Basque refugees, which kind of contrasts, some might say, with how they treated in the possible you know, Jewish uh, refugees during the Second World War. So the leader of the group was a man named Jose Camina. He's a businessman, former advisor to the Basque government, and ex-president of the Bow Stock Exchange. Other members uh, included the former Deputy and Sec Secretary General of the Partido Nacionalista Vasco, um, there was a former uh, cartographer, uh, chief cartographer of the Basque Army, um, another founding member of the Action <coughs> Nacionalista Basque Party, and former secretary general of the Ministry of Agriculture in the Basque government. There was former naval commanders, the ex-captain -ca uh, of Bilbao Port, former head of the Basque Naval Auxiliary Fleet, um, another man, Ramon Marañón, was a Soviet-trained fighter pilot and squadron leader who flew over 180 combat missions against the Nationalist Air Force during the battles of Teruel, El Chite and Ebro, um, and various other uh, distinguished military people. So when they arrived, uh, naturally, uh, the Spanish minister in Dublin got word of this, um, and he used his contacts in the Irish Civil Service, connected to General Duffy, Padre O'Curry, who's editor of the Standard at the time, very Catholic paper, Frank Geary and William Lombard Murphy, the Irish Independent, and also the president of High Court and head of the Irish Red Cross Society, uh, Connor Alexander McGuire, to get as much information as possible on what Antiveros called these pseudo Spaniards. He also campaigned to have the department put these people uh, under surveillance, which they were, uh, by army intelligence and guard intelligence. Uh, but as I said, these you know, Basques, they continued the fight um, against fascism. One of them wrote to General de Gaulle the 25th of September, asking could he join the Free French Naval Forces. Um, he said, quote, we will continue to fight against Hitler, and I hope that this time we will win, end quote. And by September 1941, four of them had already um, enlisted uh, the Allied forces. Um, the security agents of the Irish state considered Jose Camina to be the most politically prominent member of the group, yet they did not feel the need to detain him, um, primarily because his political views were not communist. Um, they noted that he went to mass every day like all the Basques, um, and um, for that, uh, that was obviously you know, a redeeming uh, factor. Um, he was also he kept in contact with um, in the Alessio Prieto, the former Minister for Defence in the Second Republic. And he's also in contact with top British officials, particularly Rear Admiral Sir Harold Burrow, who was Assistant Chief of the British Naval Staff. Um, but Camino, while he was here, he also uh, succeeded in establishing um, quite a lucrative uh, export of uh, furs to the British market uh, with a particular uh, Jewish businessman here. He, uh, there was demand in the British war effort for rabbit fur collars for pl pilots flying at high altitude. He set up a factory and began exporting this product in large quantities and a report from Monteveros to his superiors in Madrid he said that Camina's character was, light of a, was like that of a stereotypical Jew, quote, his typical morality one can only imagine, end quote. But Camina, but Antiveros was able to find um, evidence of Camina's links to the Basque uh, government and to an organisation called the Free French League of Friends of the Basques. And on the 25th of September 1939, he was charged, he was um, uh, put on trial in absentia and his family persecuted in Spain. The court found him guilty of sympathising 
with the Republic kind of directing the formation of its working class and trade union organisations. And he was also uh, charged with misappropriating large sums of money, uh, 60,000 that being lodged into a Westminster bank in uh, London. Another source of information for the minister came from a former Irish diplomat, uh, Arto Brian, who informed him that Comenia was alleged to have stolen paintings by Diario de Rogoyes, a renowned 19th century Spanish artist. And um, the Spanish authorities, the minister there, Jose Felix de Lecarica, with the German authorities, managed to discover these uh, in his uh, factory. Uh, so, obviously, had he had been sent back to Spain, he could have faced possible uh, execution. On the 1st of September 1942, three years after the sentence in absentia, Cavinia wrote a letter responding to a friend's pleas for him to return to Spain and see his family. Even if he was given the highest guarantee of safety, Comini argued that the malicious denunciations made against him by the court president, which were subsequently aired on radio and printed in the press, <coughs> did more than smirch his good character and name. He said it described me as if, quote, I were something infected, end quote. The Basque revealed his antipathy towards the Spanish church for supporting Franco's bloody crusade, and he was equally unapologetic in his description of the dictator, calling him, quote, hangman. In 1942, the group's presence in Ireland was publicised further by the arrival of an internationally renowned Basque nationalist, Father Alberto Owen India, who had been the ex-canon of Valladolid and an eyewitness to the bombing uh, of Guernica. And uh, Owen India uh, worked closely with uh, Caminha, and the minister, despite his efforts to get both of these men uh, extradited back to Spain, was finding, ironically, that the devout religiosity of the Basques uh, was something that struck a chord uh, with the ordinary Irish people. So it's rather ironic that in one of the countries that had done more uh, to defend Franco and mobilise its public in support of his cause became a place of sanctuary for his opponents for years, uh, where they lived in safety, were shown nothing but friendly hospitality, and uh, where they continued to challenge and fight fascism long after the Spanish Civil War had officially uh, been declared. So the final just thing, theme just to look at is, I suppose, German military intelligence uh, and Ireland. I suppose the most uh, obvious example is uh, the connection with Frank Ryan, which I'm sure you're all uh, well aware of, this uh, prominent Irish Republican who, despite all efforts, um, was not uh, released by the Franco estate. Um, the origins really of German intelligence in Spain um, go back to the First World War, where under the director, direction of Captain Kurt von Kron, the Kaiser's Germany established a secret intelligence organisation there called ETAPA uh, to fight um, the Allies of the Mediterranean and uh, cut off the trade routes. Uh, one of the officers on Kron's staff was Captain Wilhelm uh, Canaris who helped supervise a network of spies and maintain a successful surveillance of all Allied naval flotillas. His informers uh, relayed all the Allied shipping courses to him, uh, which was of course forwarded to U-boat commanders in the area. In the post-war period, Canaris himself became chief of the Abwehr, German military intelligence, in 1935, and he wanted to revive, remodel and intensify this overseas espionage network and to succeed where it had previously failed. The outbreak of the Spanish Civil War and the close association between General Franco and Hitler offered Canaris the opportunity to rebuild uh, ATAPA. Rebuilding a network in Spain was not easy uh, because of the rivalry that existed between the various intelligence agencies of the Nazi state. A cluster of three competing organizations quarreled to undermine each other it, uh, Himmler's uh, Gestapo, um, which acted as the Nazi state police but expanded its operations abroad as Germany annexed new territories, conquered European states. You had the SD, the Nazi Party Intelligence Organization under Reinhard Heydrich, that likewise would operate outside Germany's uh, pre war borders. And then came the Abwehr, military intelligence charged with defending Germany and counteracting all it into enemy intelligence services. Canaris's Abwehr was under the remit of the Supreme Command of the German uh, Armed Forces. 
So the advert, um, it served all branches of the Vermont without being incorporated into any one of them. So this accorded the service protection uh, from its rival SS services so long as the army could protect it. But Canaris um, divided the affair into several departments or sections known as Abteilung. The most important as the war progressed were Abteilung 2, concerned with sabotage and infiltration, and Abteilung 3, counter-espionage and security. His fluency in Spanish, uh, his time spent there during the First World War and his naval background helped foster a good relationship with Franco, who owed the Germans and the Wehrmacht in particular for critical military support supplied to his nationalist forces during the Spanish Civil War. This leverage gave Canaris a major advantage over his domestic intelligence rivals. He personally travelled to Spain on several occasions to confer with Franco. The Adver mapped areas of the country, particularly around ports, included coastal enclaves, Gibraltar, etc., where radio transmitters, infrared monitoring stations, agent cells, sabotage operations, submarine refueling depots, etc., could all be created and utilised for future operational purposes, uh, deployment. This is all taking place uh, beyond uh, the battlefield. With the help of the German business community inside Spain, the Avver gradually built up an entire clandestine network inside the country and renamed it uh, Krieg Organización in España, War Organization in Spain. So um, when war came in September 1939, the, the Avar were well placed to launch aggressive intelligence operations against its enemies with the full backing and assistance of the Francoist regime. Under station chief uh, leader Wilhelm Leisner, 600 informers and over 700 full time spies and case officers were stationed throughout Spain and its North African territories, used the security of Spanish neutrality to spy and attack the Allies land, sea, and air. The first link in the chain connecting K.O. Spani into Ireland came with the continued arrest of prominent Republican Frank Ryan, who, despite all diplomatic efforts, uh, protest meetings in Dublin and London, petitions, calls uh, for his release by the Irish government, both in the Dáil and during uh, personal face-to-face -face meetings between the Taoiseach and the Spanish minister uh, in Dublin, um, the Franco state refused uh, to release him. Yet via um, Jaime uh, de Champersin, a uh, lawyer attached to the Madrid legation, who had previously worked for Spanish intelligence during the Civil War, contact was made with the Avver to get uh, Ryan out of prison. In the most detailed report on, on Ryan that Curley wrote to Joseph Walsh, dated 26th of August 1940, he detailed the events leading up to Ryan's uh, escape. Critically, he also informed the secretary that it was uh, the Avver who had made the suggestion um, of getting uh, Ryan out. He said, quote, um, Mr. B. Chamberson was in the Spanish Secret Service during the Civil War and formed close contacts then with the German Intelligence Service. He is on friendly terms with certain Germans in Madrid. Being aware of my concern for Franco and having helped me in my efforts, he suggested some time ago that the uh, Gestapo, quote, Avver might serve to secure Ryan's liberation. About the middle of May, I decided to fall uh, in line with the suggestion. I was beginning to doubt the likelihood of my direct petition to the War Office meeting with success. All our, all our appeals have met with a deaf ear. For some unaccountable reason, Franco himself was the stumbling block, and it appeared likely that Ryan's imprisonment would last as long as his own life or that of the regime itself. K.O. Spanian saw the potential abilities of Ryan as a sabotage agent to infiltrate and carry out operations against Britain, particularly in Northern Ireland. One important agent uh, named Friedrich Wolfgang uh, Blaum, attached to Abteilung 2, Sabotage and Infiltration, met with the regime's chief of police, Jose Finnett, and Franco's brother-in-law and all-powerful minister, Ramon Serrano Sunier, to get Ryan handed over to the Abwehr all against the expressed wishes of the Irish government. Quote, in May 1940, Blaum was instructed to contact Frank Ryan with the aid of Shamper Sin, Ryan's lawyer. Blaum was able to see Ryan at the prison. Quote. With the help of other Avver agents, Helmut Clisman and Kurt Haller, back in Germany, Avver chief Wilhelm Canaris finally saw the possible use Ryan may have for Germany in the summer 1940, particularly with the Battle of Britain and Operation uh, sea line, the invasion of the island in motion. 
he, quote, intervened personally, end quote, uh, said Kurt Haller in his post-war interrogation, and arranged with Franco to transfer Ryan uh, to the Avgar. That agents of a foreign intelligence agency could have direct access to a head of state <coughs> to free a prisoner and get approval from him for that prisoner's release, <coughs> while all diplomatic efforts by a friendly Catholic and neutral state to secure the release of their citizen into their custody were ignored, frustrated and undermined, tells us a lot about Franco, his real loyalties and ambitions. In conclusion, I hope this paper shed just a small light into the extent to which we view the Spanish Civil War as its repercussions, the lives it impacted on, and the course of Spanish history was shaped by it and continued to be so in the years after the world believed that the guns had fell silent. Thank you.